I've always believed that if you want to make a significant advance in any area in life, it doesn't just apply to Jiu-Jitsu, but if you want to make a significant advance in any aspect of human endeavor, you've got to offer something new and different. If you just emulate what's come before you, it's difficult to rise above the things that you emulate. The best you can really do is to be as good as they were. It's hard to stand out in the crowd if you're just emulating. The idea is to create something that you're doing which is different, preferably new, and which your opponents don't really understand too well. If you can create in some niche area of the game a knowledge advantage where your athletes know exactly what they need to do and their opponents don't, you're probably going to do pretty well. So I always look for aspects of the sport which I think are underexploited, undervalued, but which could potentially lead to great results. Um, there was an obvious one in Jiu Jitsu in the legs. Um, Jiu-Jitsu had been a very, very well-developed sport in terms of positional control, upper body submissions. Most of the territory was pretty well known, but the lower body lagged far behind. And so that was an obvious candidate to start a uh, program of trying to create something new, something interesting in the sport and getting good results. But I've always believed innovation is a key element to some kind of success. The other idea um, was to assess what I thought the reason for the success of Jiu-Jitsu was in its earliest days. The real reason is because Jiu-Jitsu, the classic system of Jiu-Jitsu, works as a system. It's actually a very simple system and, and like all combat systems, that's a virtue. The simpler the system, the, in general, the more effective it'll be in the hurly-burly and craziness of a, of a fight. Jiu-Jitsu is this very simple four-part system based on first, getting your opponent down to the ground. Okay, In general, people are much easier to control on the ground than they're in the standing position. Step number two, get past your opponent's legs. The legs represent danger. Uh, if you have a skilled grappler, almost all of the main submission holds, triangles, duty katamis, they're all set up through the use of the legs. So getting past the legs represents getting past one of the main dangers that you face once you're on top of somebody. Once you get past the legs, then you work your way into the third part of the system, working through a hierarchy of pins, where each pin is judged as to how effective it is for setting up strikes on the ground. And so the mounted position and the rear mount score the highest amount of points. And then finally, there's a fourth stage, submitting your opponent. When you've hit him enough that he's making obvious mistakes, and the arms are extended or the neck is exposed, you go into a stranglehold, an arm lock, etc, etc. If the system doesn't work, just reboot the system. If he stands back up on you, just do it all over again. Take him down, pass his legs, work your way through the pins, and finish him. So at any given moment, regardless of where they were, every Jiu-Jitsu player knew where they had to go. They had a sense of direction. And in a crisis situation, a man with a sense of direction will almost always survive and go on to win. But the moment an athlete loses direction in a crisis situation, he'll drown right there on the floor. You have no idea what to do and he'll quit. He'll find ways to quit. What I did is I started to ask, okay, if the reason for the success of Jiu-Jitsu was its systematic nature, could you go further than that? Were there more systems out there that we could bring in? So that you had systems within systems, you had the general four-step system of Jiu-Jitsu, could you add systems to that? And the answer was yes. There are certain parts of our sport 
where an opponent's body can be controlled in ways where you can systematically attack them. And so what I did is I selected certain areas of the sport which I thought were amenable to being systematized and created various subsystems and then linked those together. So that you had the overall system of Jiu-Jitsu, which doesn't change, it's a basic four-step system. And within that, you had groups of subsystems, each one linked to the other. And in this sense, I believe it was a, an advance in the way I understood Jiu-Jitsu. And I was able to communicate that to my athletes. And uh, it gave them a definite advantage in certain areas of the, of, of the sport. And it gave them a heightened sense of direction. And that sense of direction, I believe, is the, the fundamental reason why Jiu-Jitsu was advantageous in the early days of MMA. And it's the fundamental reason why I believe my athletes have an advantage when they go into modern grappling tournaments. Because you put them in certain situations and they know exactly what they have to do, step-by-step -step algorithms. Their opponents are wondering what they should do. There's doubt. There's, there's confusion. There's no confusion on the part of my guys. They know exactly where they have to go. Everything's been mapped out in advance. They've drilled it a thousand times. They've done it with each other 10,000 times. And so they have a sense of direction in these certain niche positions that we've systematized over the years, which gives them a dramatic knowledge advantage and crucially that sense of direction that their opponents lack. And once they get into those areas, it's very, very hard to, to work against them.